My name is Claudio Silva. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a data platform architect for data masterminds. And I love PowerShell, and I contribute for DBA tools and DBA checks, uh, PowerShell models on the community. And nowadays, my main focus when working is doing some performance tuning, OK? But also migrations and consolidations and all that stuff. So let's start first to, to talk about DBA tools. So anyone doesn't know DBA tools? Cool. Nice to have new people. So DBA tools is a free open source PowerShell module that was uh, and he, he is running and being developed by the data professionals for the data pro professionals. Nowadays, it contains more than 650 commands. I know it's a lot. Uh, even myself sometimes is like, oh, we really have a comment for this. Well, yeah, we have. <laughs> but I need to find, I need to use the, the help, like everyone else, to, to get there. So it started by uh, Chrissy Lemaire uh, because she needed to do some uh, SharePoint migrations between some instances. Uh, and after that, um, the community about DBA tools started, and we started building more and more comments. And today we have a lot of people helping here. We also try uh, to encourage the best practice. So some of the things that our comments do are based on best practice from Microsoft, scripts done by other community members that uh, um, follow best practice, and therefore we try to follow them so you don't fall in a trap and doing not so good things. So from the ones that already knew DBA tools, anyone ever contribute with something, open an issue, Documentation, no one? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for that. And I have something for you in the end of the, the session, okay? But you need to come here. Don't forget that. <laughs> so uh, one important thing, um, because there is so many codes, so many comments, how uh, we can reach to DBA tools, how we get to there. So we have a website, dbatools.io. Uh, we have a document, uh, documentation website. So in the end, we pick on the help that we have on the PowerShell comments. And it's available online. Uh, and you can search for the comments and so on to try to find what you need. We are uh, in Mastodon. Also, LinkedIn, if you want to follow us. Every now and then, we try to publish some uh, blog posts that community uh, as a throughout or whatever we have uh, new stuff to, to share with you. If uh, you have uh, questions and uh, uh, we, we have the, the Slack channel, which have a lot of people that are willing to help you. Okay, So if you have a question, more specific one, or you think you found a bug and you want someone to do a double check and so on, you can hang out to Slack. Do the question there, and someone will try to help you uh, across that uh, uh, problem. And of course, our code is open source, and it is on the on, on uh, the Git repository. And we have wrote a book uh, about DBA tools, uh, which I encourage you, of course, to take a look and to try uh, um, ends on because it's a guide how you will start from a couple of initial PowerShell stuff and then building on top on more and more complex stuff, and uh, it's a good way to uh, learn more about DBA tools. And if you want, you can use the BL DBA tools 50. Uh, this is a discount uh, code to get 50% discount on the book. I can share later that if you want to. Uh, Azure SQL Manage Instance, so the other part that we will be touching today. Anyone is using uh, Azure Manage instance? Yeah. OK. So Azure, Manage, uh, Azure SQL Manage instance, uh, it's a scalable uh, cloud database service that uh, Microsoft uh, uh, says is near 100% compatibility with on-prem. Uh, so it has all the features of the, the past solution, like automatic patching, um, having the backups, I have ability. Uh, and the product has uh, like four years, uh, and Microsoft keeps 
pushing features, uh, in, uh, normally first in private and then goes general available, um, to add more and more capabilities to the platform. So today, what we're going to uh, see? We'll be seeing what's, what is new or what we can now also automate using DBA tools when it comes to SQL credentials. I'm not talking about a SQL login. I'm talking about a SQL credential okay, inside of uh, the, the instance. We will see how we can do backups from our on-prem uh, instance, VM, whatever, to uh, the Bob storage. And then how we can restore from that Bob storage inside of our managed instance. Okay? So in the end, we'll be doing a kind of a migration, which can be offline in this case, because it's like with downtime, we are expecting to do the backup, and then on the other side, stop the, all the things and do the backup, and on the, on the other side, we do the restore. And finally, uh, we will see one thing that I, I found very interesting that Microsoft is so confident about SQL managed instance that nowadays, if you have a SQL 2022 on prem and you want to test or go to the cloud and go to the managed instance, you can move to there. And if you find that, well, too expensive, I was expecting something different, performance is not uh, uh, great, you can back up and restore on prem again. So, anyone were aware of that? So that I think is really important because it's a way like you are free, you are not, you can go uh, forward and back. Okay. So here are the demos that I said. Not 100% of the demos will have exclusive DBA tools. I will let you know when that is the case. Uh, either because it's not covered yet, or because the way that it works, it needs other modules that Microsoft need, like Azure, uh, sorry, AZ.SQL. Um, the ones that we have with DB tools, as you already use the other ones, is to make your life easier. So just enjoy. And don't forget, I'm not moving and migrating any SQL logins, jobs, and so on, but you can still use DBA tools to uh, make the full migration thing that you need between on-prem and the managed instance. Okay. So let's start with our first demo about uh, um, the SQL credential. So nowadays, how do you do backups to a Bob storage? If you want to use DBA tools, for instance, and you want to do a backup from on-prem and save your backup to the Bob storage, how do you do that? Any guess? Correct. And what do you need to do that? The SAS key, right? So the thing with the SAS key is that uh, it has some pitfalls. So when you generate a new SAS key, you need to define a, time, a lifetime of it. If you put it to brother, you cannot kill it. So you need to exp that that key expire, okay? Uh, if you um, if you don't have that access to do that, it will uh, fail your backup. So the thing here is that we implement on DBA tools the ability to do a new identity type called managed identity, okay? So this will help on the managed instance side. You can do uh, copy only backups also for the blob storage, okay? And you can do that if you provide the specific permissions without creating the SAS key, okay? So it's a new type of authentication, let's say that way, that is a managed identity, and then you can use it that way to, um, to do the backup. So here, I will uh, point to my, my blob storage and to my managed instance, I think if I'm correct, it's not yet here. So just one sec to get here. Okay. 
And what I will be doing here is passing my instance, which is the managed instance, my credential, which has my, lo my login, um, which, is, which in this case is a SQL login. I will provide a name, and the name of the credential, in this case, needs to be the same as the URL for the blob storage, okay? That is the same for the SAS key. So by doing this, it will connect to the manage instance, and I have created my managed identity um, setting, okay? So as you are used to, to do with uh, the other commands, so we have a get command, in this case, the DBA credential, which means that now we can connect to that instance and get that settings, and if you want, you can remove it, we can change it. So this was an addition because until recently, you could only uh, create the SAS keys. And now with managed instance, whenever you want to do backups to the Bob storage, this will be handy. There is, uh, I will share the, these uh, demos on my uh, GitHub repository, uh, but there is here a blog post from Microsoft why they went to the managed identity way and why the SAS is not that secure or why it's not the best approach. So with manage, uh, the managed instance, we still have our SQL logins, but if we want to have uh, Windows authentication, we need to have Azure Active Directory, okay? So one other thing that we um, made on the comments uh, is that we are able to create a login, which in this case, as you can see here, this is my AAD login on these uh, uh, tenants. So one of the things that uh, uh, is also possible to do is that you can create the contained user. So you can say, create a user within the database and not the login, okay? Because if you migrate and so on, you keep all that together. So one of the changes that we need to, to uh, add is the external provider. Because if you see the TSQL syntax of this creation of the logins for the A, uh, AAD, uh, you need to say uh, for external provider, okay? So I will run this and if I came here, so this was the, the login. So whenever you try to do this, behind the scenes, there is a check with the AAD to double check that actually your user exists. So it's similar what, what happens with uh, the normal um, on-prem AD. So if the login does not exist, SQL Server will yell saying, I don't know that person. Now, this was a, a new lo a login, and the same way, if you want to, to do an inventory, if you want to get uh, all the logins that you have, uh, you can use the get uh, DBA login. And I will also create, in this case, a user. So it will be a user that will be within my database, which is connected to this login, okay? So that way, if I have enough permissions, I will be able to uh, connect to the database and run my queries there. So as you can see here, this is a, a user, or uh, this user is connected to this login, um, and from this point on, if I connect with this account, I can run all of my queries. So to check the existence of that, uh, that login, so we are getting on the instance, and in this case, the database is called DBA tools, and we are using the login type external user. So this is a way to double check uh, if that is currently a, 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 a D login or not, okay? And the same way, if we want to clean up, we can drop the login and, uh, sorry, the user and also the login. And in this case, this is the example for the containered user which is I'm creating a user with exactly the same uh, um, 
name, the same address, but I'm saying on the new DB user that this is for external provider. So it keeps the same functionality that you already have for contained users on-prem, but in this case for an AAD login that exists uh, on the cloud. So we, if we also run this, we can get the user, which in this case is not linked to any, of, any login. And in the same way, when we filter, it's there without the login. So far, any question? So let's start seeing something more interesting. This is important, but we go now on the fun stuff. So doing offline migration. So let's say that uh, uh, you can get a cool downtime window when you can get your backup done after uh, stopping all the applications, and then you do the backup to the, the blob storage, and from the blob storage, you will restore inside of your managed instance, okay? So in this case, I'm running uh, on a VM um, a 2022 uh, instance, okay? Which has this SQL bit uh, database there. Uh, and I will just create here a table, which already exists, of course. So this one already have myself, correct. So we will see this data on the other, on the other sides. So let me pick uh, my local host uh, connection, which is my local instance, saying my database, uh, using here the credential name and the Azure base URL to do, uh, to do the, the backup. And now, because I'm working with my on-prem and to do the backup to the URL, I need to generate an SAS key to be able to do the backup, okay? So for that, I come here to my uh, storage account and on the shared uh, access signature, I will generate a mighty power account. And here, as you can see, by default, it shows uh, this amount of time where this key will be uh, accessible, meaning that if you share that key with someone at some point, and depending on the permissions that you have, people will be able to reach there, okay? So that's why uh, the thing is not so uh, secure if you don't be careful, okay? So I will generate, and it's quite fast. We get all the tokens and the things. So what we need for DBA tools is this key here that we should put on our SAS variable without the question mark, OK? Just the SV something. So let me put that on the variable. And now I will create an SAS uh, credential, OK? So what I'm doing here is Here on the security, on the credentials, I now have this credential created. And if I see here, is from a shared access signature, OK? So having this, this is the thing that will say, uh, and the password is the, the key that I, I grab. Having this will say to SQL Server, hey, you will connect to the URL that you are saying. And because the URL is the same as the name of the credential, it automatically be there and will be able to do the backup. So this is something that exists for a long time now because it's the, a regular um, way to do the, the backups for the URL. Uh, and what I will be doing here is creating the same SAS key, also to show that it's still available and it works, but on the managed instance side. Okay? So currently, I don't have here any credential, okay? So it's not here. And pointing to the, the DBA tools MI uh, instance, I have created this credential here, okay? So this way is like a pre-requirement to make sure that uh, from on-prem you can write on the, on the blob storage and from the managed instance you can go to the blob storage and grab whatever you need from there. 
And now I will check uh, my database. In this case, I will be using this SQL bits database. Uh, I will generate here a backup file name, which will contain the um, actual uh, date time. So this will be the name that we will find on our Bob search. And to do the backup, we use our friend backup DBA database, where we say that I want to connect to my on-prem instance with my local uh, credential uh, to SQL bits database, backup file name, type of the backup is full, with checksum and compression, and in this case also with copy only. And to where? To our Azure URL. So, database has one table with one record, it's very big, so that's why I compress it. And therefore, we have here the information about where our backup is living right now. So this is the file name on that Bob storage. Now with that, I can use restore DBA database, connecting to my manage instance with my SQL login for the manage instance. I will restore with a, a prefix on the database name, so it will be like a new SQL bit. And my path will be from my previous object, so the, out, the output that I got from the backup command. I will grab the, uh, the path property, which has the full path. And in this case, I'm saying uh, with replace, in case I already have the database there, it will be dropped and or overwritten by this one. So right now, on the manage instance, we just have a DBA tools uh, database, OK? And by running this one, it will, so this takes a little bit more, uh, a couple more seconds than, let's say, a regular uh, restore, because behind the scenes, and so it's here, but it's still taking some time, because behind the scenes, what's happening is that Microsoft, uh, because of the I have ability. It has availability groups behind the scenes for the replicas. So database, when it's being headed here, in the end, is also being restored on the replicas, right? So to have the database in a full operation mode, it takes a couple more seconds than uh, the regular uh, not managed instance or not availability group uh, way to, to have the database. Uh, yeah, and then if we come here, we have exactly our our database. So this is like offline migration. If you can afford the time or the downtime in this, guy, in this case, you can uh, prepare all the scripts with all the credentials, with all the things, and do it offline. Wait. Yes? In case of we have multiple databases and you want to take over one code, you can. So you can do something in the uh, we can say in database. You can say how many databases you want here. So. If, uh, let's say that you want to keep the, the database name, okay, yeah. so that you have on-prem. In, in, uh, in the, this example, let me just... So it, here in the backup, I'm doing database, okay, name. But here, you can uh, append, so imagine that I had uh, more database, I could do a, a, a list of database here, okay? Can be this, this uh, variable with multiple ones, or I can append here uh, SQL bits, two, and SQL bits three, and SQL bits whatever you want. So as long as they exist on the, your uh, source instance, it will not provoke any error. Or uh, even if it does not exist, it will provide you a warning like, I could not find this database, and it will mo move to the next one, OK? OK, now. Let's say that we went there to see the views, and by some reason, performance was not as expected, or maybe the, the finance come to us and say, hey, where it comes this 2K per month now? Well, we are running some managed instance. Well, but who gave that? <laughs> so, and by some reason, let's say you need to, to put it outside. Or 
everything is okay, but you need a backup to put on-prem to mask your data and to share with developers to build new stuff, okay? So in that case, what we will we'll, uh, do here is create this SQL credential, this time as a managed identity, meaning that I won't be generating an SAS key or using the SAS, uh, SAS key that we had before. Uh, then I will insert a couple of more records just to show whenever we restore that the records are there and that we inserted uh, from, that, from that instance. Um, and one thing that, and this will be like the first comment that you will see, it's not, it, it, which is not a DBA tools comment, uh, which is a comment to, to grant some role, okay? So as I state here, to be able to uh, write, in this case, for, the, for the, the blob storage, you need at least to have a storage blob data contributor, okay? And I will show you how ca you can do that on the interface on the, the, the website, uh, but then we can run it um, as a PowerShell comment. So first thing first, so you remember I have it here on my manage instance, my shared uh, access signature one, right? And the URL is the same because it's the same container that we are using, and I will run this comment and it just worked. It did not yell saying, hey, you, we already have this URL. Why are you adding a new one? Why? Because I provided the force parameter. So if you, you run without the force parameter, it will say, no, already exists, do nothing, and exit. If you use, and it says you can use force, you can specify force to drop the existing one. So in the case, you are overwriting the existing one, okay? So now if I come back here and I open again, now is a managed identity, okay? So in case that you want to overwrite, of course, you can do the get to check if it uh, is the same or not and then drop it, or you can use just the new one with the force parameter which will overwrite the thing. So now let's create here a table on the, on the, the managed instance uh, site and uh, insert one record with my name and the current date. And we can use, again, DBA tools to check that data, okay? And now, let's do the backup from the managed instance to the blob storage, okay? So what we need to be aware here? First thing, as I mentioned here, it's mandatory to have the copy only. So you cannot do a regular backup that will break your, uh, your chain okay, on the managed instance. So you need copy only, okay? Uh, and when we run this, I got here one error, which there is already an open data reader associated with the connection. So what I found, and this is something that I still need to uh, dig a little bit more, is that somehow uh, the connection that is open is, tr uh, is trying to be reutilized. So we have some multi-threading behind the scenes which can make this happen. A way to uh, overcome this is, is to create a connection that supports uh, multiple active result sets, okay? So in this case, just, f just for, uh, for this backup, for this demo, I'm using, so I'm creating the, I'm creating the connection here on the, on the line 69 uh, with this specific uh, switch, and then I'm using here as an as a SQL instance, okay? So this is something that you can do normally with DBA tools. You can create one connection, you put that on a variable, and then you can reutilize that variable along the way instead of opening again and again new connections, okay? So depending on the work that you are doing, that may or not make sense to do, okay? But we still have an error. But this error is much more like uh, Azure permission stuff. So operating system error 50. So this means you don't have permissions to write on the blob storage, okay? Meaning 
that when I come here to my containers and uh, if I go here, here on the role assignments, I have my login that I'm connected with and one identity not found. Who knows what that is? And I can head here a new role assignment. And here I can find the storage account, uh, storage bulb da data contributor, okay? And I could hit next, then I can say, is for a managed identity. I can select here my manage instance, will show here, and that way when I select, if now I do the review and assign, it will create this. So this seems much less complex than generate a huge string uh, that you need to copy and use on the other side, and uh, if you don't have already, or if you already expired, you need to create a new one, and all that stuff, right? So this way, what we are uh, saying in the end is, hey, on Azure, I have this uh, DBA tools MI instance, and that instance has permissions to write here, okay, or to access the, here. So I will not save or not create it here, or this way, to show you uh, how you can do that uh, with uh, Azure uh, commands. So you need to get uh, your uh, current subscription, and you should get your uh, service principle, in this case based on the, uh, the name, on the DBA tool's name, and to add permissions or to add this new role, we need to use uh, the new AZ role assignment, okay? And you need to pass this scope, which is kind of huge, but you need to put it there uh, with your service principle. So by doing this, we will get the entry on the other side, okay? So if I go back uh, here, And if I go to role assignments, now I have my DBA tools MI here, okay? And now I can try do the backup again and check that hopefully I will be able or not just The request is not supported. Ah, I forget the ignore file checks. That's why. I will come back to this in a minute. Because uh, I will be back here in a minute. Let me go to the next one and I will come back. So I cannot now restore, of course, on the other side. Can Should not because I generated a new file name. But we can always, because that's why we are doing demos. Uh, we can uh, go here and so for the tests, these ones. Let me check again. So Azure SQL credential, copy only. Yeah, somehow I had already the the file name there so sorry for that but it's here 
So this is the proof that the backup run. So we now have the backup path, uh, which is the new one with the new dates. Uh, all the script that in the end was run. So this is also a good tip if you are running, if you are running the, um, the, the backup command, if you want to see the script that is, it will be run, uh, you can use the option uh, uh, output script only. It will give you the entire T-SQL that will be run there. All right, so now that we have this, I can now connect again to my uh, local instance. It will be doing the restore from the blob storage, meaning that now, if I came here, I have my new SQL bits, and I have here the table that I have created before with the record, okay, so at 14.08. So this is the proof that you can go back and forth from 2022 um, to manage instance and back again to on-prem. So yeah, also we can double check the data here on our local VM. Okay, now, Microsoft in late uh, January uh, launched or wrote these blog posts um, about automating the setup of the SQL, Azure SQL Manage instance. So um, at the documentation on the Learn uh, platform, uh, you already have like all the exhaustive checklists and steps that you need to follow. Uh, to be able to create an MI link. So an M MI link in the end is creating uh, an availability group on each side of the on-prem and on the managed instance, and it will create a distributed availability group that will aggregate both of those, okay, to be able to do uh, a replication. And then in the end, whenever you want, if you want just to migrate to there, you can cut over that connection, so you fail over and do the cut off, and, cut off and you have the database migrated uh, online, okay? So these uh, scripts download this year, so it's a shame. I already provide uh, feedback to, to the product group that they not create a, a, a module on the gallery. So it's a script that you click here and it's like you are downloading the latest commutative update or whatever, so uh, for me it doesn't make too much sense. And um, they then provide here how the things work, uh, what are the limitations, what are, uh, and one that I think it's important to mention, currently you cannot do this type of migration from a 2017, okay? That is excluded of the, uh, from that list. I asked why NDA stuff, uh, uh, we are working on that, so yeah. Okay, thank you. So, for people at home, um, thank you for that information. Okay, yeah. I asked, they said, yeah, we are working on it. So, here, an attendee is saying that uh, Microsoft uh, said they don't have too many people to using the, um, the, the, manage, the SQL Server 2017, and therefore they did not put an effort to being able to do this for that. But later this year, probably it will uh, appear. So yeah, uh, in the end, what Microsoft did was a module that uh, is like a, uh, an attended way to do it. So you cannot like pass a credential and it will do automatic all the stuff. So the idea is like you go to, through the point and you need to double check that everything is uh, uh, green or okay. Uh, and this is the script that you, you will get when you download. So another thing that kind of annoys me is that uh, we have uh, function names without any verb. So it's Microsoft not being consistent with Microsoft, Microsoft guidelines, so it's kind of strange. Uh, also, it's important that you need, and that is also on that blog post, you need some uh, other modules to make this run. So SQL. Um, the SQL Server module, az.sql uh, and az.account. So what I will show you here uh, is the way they explain on the, on the, on the, the blog post. So I will uh, import 
this uh, uh, script. And in this case, they do not support the, the credentials to being passed as a parameter. So what will happen is that here, uh, I will just set my, my account, or my, sorry, my two instances that I, I need. And they have two comments for now, okay? There is a third one to come. But they have two comments for now, and this one is about validating the, and preparate the, the, um, the MI link. So this will do a lot of um, validations about if you have all the pre-requirements uh, existing and set up to be able to do so. So it checks if you have the enable HADR thing on the instance on-prem. They, uh, they check if you have the necessary uh, certificates that needs to be on both sides and so on. So there is a lot of checks happening. And as you can see now, it's asked me uh, to provide which account I want to use to connect to the manage instance. So I will put here. And so one thing that is also very cool is that they actually are deploying behind the scenes like a job that is calling a PowerShell to do a test net connection between both ends. So meaning that you can access from on-prem to the managed instance and on the other way around. And that is because of the, the port 5022 uh, that you need to open on your uh, uh, network security groups or if you have the private endpoint, I think that is not needed. So be aware that here, of course, I did some preparation to be able to connect to the instance and so on. But yeah, this is a comment. Two credentials, one, uh, one from the on-prem instance, the other one for the, for the managed instance, and then um, we are OK and good to go. Then the second comment they have on this uh, module is the create uh, MI link, which uh, needs to, to say, we need to say what is our uh, on-prem instance, our destination managed instance, the database name list, it supports more than one database, OK? Uh, the backup path that we want to take to take the backup locally, okay? Um, and with that, it will do a couple of checks, like uh, the database name is validated and uh, uh, it's in the correct state, uh, and uh, we have the TD encryption. And now we say, OK, you are about to start for the SQL bits. You want to move on? Yes, I want. So now what happens behind the scenes is that on the script, Microsoft is running some T-SQL to create uh, the two availability groups, one on each side and the, the distributed availability group, OK? Um, with these names that you see here, SQL bits, link AG. Um, and whenever that is done, we will see on the, on the, the um, the SQL sites on the on-prem instance, if we go here, we see that now we have a primary AG and a distributed one that will make the link possible, OK? And then whenever it, it finish, it, uh, it, so it does the, the seeding. OK, of the process. And whenever it, it finish, it just come out and say, OK, everything is, is good. So now this means if I come here to my uh, SQL bits database and I try to insert records and I'm connected here to my local VM, OK, not the managed instance, uh, this works. And if I go to my manage instance, I have here my SQL bits database, which does not appear saying synchronizing, but it is. And the thing here is that if I try to do a select star from my DND table, I can. Why? Because it's a read, a read replica. But you can see that the second uh, the second um, name or the second record is already there because it's automatically synchronized. So it's an availability group, period. Okay. So now let's say 
we are uh, okay with it, and uh, we have an uh, uh, estimated time or a time window that we can use uh, to do the, the, the failover and to cut the, the, the distributed availability group. So in the end, we are, we are about to finish the migration and make the, the um, MI as the primary one and um, cut the link uh, with, uh, with the existing one. So this is the third command that will appear uh, because Microsoft had like an initial code and this one actually was uh, wrote by me, so I went to the documentation, pick up all the checklist that was there, and uh, transform that in PowerShell code with DBA tools common behind the scenes to run it. Uh, and these will do the thing. So as always, if you are using Azure stuff and so on, watch out that the, the world will fall apart. And now it will do the, the replication. So behind the scenes, it will check uh, the LSN of the database to double check if on both sides they are equal to do a safe failover and after that to cut the connection, okay? 